Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the presentation today, How to Grow Your Business and Save Labor with Innovative Mounting Solutions from PLP, brought to you by AE Solar and Preformed Line Products. Before we begin, if you are experiencing any, any te technical difficulties, uh, please notify me by typing in your question in the question section of your control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and click send. Um, if uh, you're having trouble uh, either seeing the presentation, which you should see the, the first slide of the, the first slide on your screen today, or and you also should be hearing my audio. So uh, let me know if you have any difficulties. Um, also, we'll be having a question and answer session following the presentation. You're welcome to submit your questions at any point during the webinar, and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible after the presentation. Any questions that aren't answered, uh, we will get back to you via email. And um, of course, after the uh, presentation is complete, uh, by Monday, we should have this uh, webinar up to our YouTube channel as well. There will be a brief survey that will pop up in, the, in a new window immediately following the webinar. Um, if you could take just a couple of minutes to complete it, um, it really helps us to uh, better define uh, the information and future uh, topics that we uh, present to you. Um, and if you also take a few minutes to complete the survey, we'll email you a PDF of the presentation as well. So if there are no questions at this time, which I don't see any coming through, I will go ahead and introduce uh, Darren Mitchell from PLP, and he will be introducing our uh, presenters today. Darren? Hello, good morning, thanks. Uh, my name is Darren Mitchell. I'm the field sales manager with Preform Line Products, and I have the uh, privilege to work with AEE as the national account manager. I know we got some exciting products we're gonna talk to you about today. One of them is my favorite is our new carport product, which I know we're gonna get into later. Um, but I will say it's a great opportunity. As you know, the carport market is emerging and we have a niche where we can actually provide carport solutions at a much smaller quantity and size. You could have a 24 kW system where traditionally carport manufacturers in the past wouldn't, wouldn't want to quote those type of jobs. So with our relationship, with AEE, we're able to provide a really unique carport solution that I believe will open up a lot more doors of business, provide uh, better streams of margin. We know that the uh, residential rooftop pitch mount uh, racking is uh, and, and solar is you know, tightening up as far as margins. Our carport system, I believe, will give everybody an opportunity to actually uh, win more business and open more doors. So I'm really excited about it. Um, we have two really uh, smart and uh, Great folks from PLP today. We have Adam Seidel, our global product support engineer, and John Markowitz, our global market manager, business development from Cleveland, Ohio. And they're on the call right now, and I'm going to pass it over to them. So enjoy. Thank you, uh, Darren, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this is John Markowitz uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, at first I'd like to start off and give you just a brief int introduction about PLP. So our company was founded back in 1947. We're very much an engineering driven company. Our headquarters are here in sunny Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we have, uh, we're a global company with 23 facilities worldwide. Um, we, our annual sales are, are approaching a half a billion. And we're, we're known in, in the global markets, we serve uh, customers in over 140 com countries. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight here is that uh, our company has uh, manufactured and shipped over one gigawatt of mounting systems worldwide, and they're in service today. Our company is publicly traded on NASDAQ, and uh, we are proud to be a US manufacturing company. So all of our solar mounting systems that we provide in the United States are manufactured right here. Uh, we have a large facility in Rogers, Arkansas. It's 345,000 square feet. And we also have another facility in North Carolina that's 280,000 square feet. We not only manufacture at those locations, but we also warehouse product there as well.
So we have several products to talk about today. Uh, the first one, as Darren mentioned, is our solar carport. This is our newest uh, product offering that we've just recently introduced into the marketplace. This, uh, this product line has several, several features and benefits associated with it. I'd like to touch on it just a couple. First of all, uh, this is a, a modular design. It uses common components, but uh, what's really unique about it is, our, is the adjustability. Uh, you can adjust this carport in the field to match up with any width PV module. So how many times have we dealt with projects where the module changes and uh, you have to go back through the design and possibly manufacturing of the, of the carport to adjust for that module? Uh, our system can adjust uh, in the field. So uh, it's really universal to any, any type of 60 cell or 72 cell module. Uh, the system also, when we first started developing it, we noticed a lot of, a lot of carport systems uh, had clamps that uh, required four clamps for each PV module. Uh, we've come up with a design that uses a shared module clamp. So this will save you up to 50% in parts um, in the field. And of course, that immediately translates to labor savings. So installing fewer parts will save you time in the field. This uh, system also has uh, pre-assembled, pre-fabricated components that we ship out. So the, uh, that will, again, reduce the number of SKUs that you're dealing with out in the field and will help save you time on, on labor and get your project turned around quickly. All right, so this is Adam Seidel uh, coming to you live from Albuquerque, New Mexico, one of the origins of the solar racking industry. Um, glad to be here today. So I'm going to talk a little more about the, the carport. So using the common components that John had mentioned, you can come up with a few different um, layouts of the carport. They can either be one or two car deep. Uh, you can also have bays, as we call them, that's the, the distance between your vertical supports of 19 or 27 feet, so that's two or three cars wide. Uh, we ask that the three car wide one be used in the areas that don't have snow, because uh, that'll enable the span to, to be acceptable. Um, we've also, uh, the, the one car deep can fit four modules and the two car deep can fit seven modules when they're 60 cell or six modules if they're 72 cell. We've also designed this so that it can take um, uh, a commercial vehicle, um, even semi cab, um, so it's up to 15 feet tall of clearance. And that is to our structural member, that's not to the module. So no, no problem possibly damaging a vehicle up to 15 feet there and then it can either be flat or five or ten degrees and tilted in either direction now um, i'm part of the product support team and i work with engineering at plp and these are the kinds of things that we've come up with to be able to provide to you with each system uh, so we, as you can see on the right, we do have some foundation recommendations and those can change, of course, depending on the surface that you're putting the foundation into. And then if you need to get a PE stamp, those are available in the 50 states uh, with a PE that we worked with to actually design the system. So they should be able to turn that around really quickly, two to three days max. This is a very heavy duty carport so it can it can actually take a beating by 30 psf of snow by 120 miles per hour of wind according to ASCE 71016 if you know what those are and uh risk category two i put that there it's pretty technical term but it what it means is when we have um you know, carports are built to take a beating and be around people um, risk category one is something for ground mounts that are out in the field where they're going to see nothing but cows or buzzards, um, whereas this can take a beating. It can take, it 
probably take a knock by an F-150. Wouldn't really recommend that because it won't be good for the truck, but it's certainly capable of handling that and has been engineered to be in service uh, with some tough conditions. So part of what helps with that, that vertical column is made of a steel tube that has a half inch wall uh, thickness. And um, you can see it's actually a weldment. So at the base of it is a flange that receives uh, threaded bolts coming up out of the ground. That'll be in the, in the concrete foundation. And you just bolt that plate to the um, to those threaded rods coming up and you can also adjust the uh, the plumb because you've got four different bolts that allow you to do that kind of like a light post um, it's everything is pre-drilled factory welded and galvanized steel so it's just ready to go you don't have to drill into that half inch thick steel you also don't have to drill into the I-beams, which sit on top of it. So we call that a strong back. That's gonna be kind of your north-south support. Um, that is a W12 by 35 I-beam. So that's 12 inch tall I-beam, very rigid. Uh, that just bolts right on top of the weldment that you can see at the lower right there. So on top of the, um, the vertical column that I mentioned before is, another welded plate with a couple of gussets coming out of it and that just bolts using uh, 12 three quarter inch bolts um it also has a pretty long cantilever there uh 15 feet is the minimum so it's pretty easy to fit a car under there and to avoid uh, impacts when the door is being opened So next, uh, I think, John, we're going to talk yeah. about mounting the modules. Thanks, Adam. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, our, our, modules, our modules are mounted on purlins, and these are galvanized C profiles. Uh, what we are doing here is we're providing those pre-punched. So, again, we're, we're avoiding any on-site drilling, cutting, welding on this system. So we really made it easier to install this system. Uh, these uh, C channels are great. We have them set up so that they are facing each other. Uh, it not only makes it look more aesthetically pleasing when you're looking at it from underneath, but it also hides your wiring channels. So they're they're a good option for putting your your cabling into those uh, C channels. And then uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, our module clamp. We we have a very unique module clamp design here. Uh, this module clamp gets uh, installed into the purlins using tech screws and uh, it's a shared module clamp meaning that it, it attaches two different two modules at the same time and it sets that spacing for you at three quarter inch so there's no measuring it just easily slide the modules together uh, use the stainless steel hardware and attach them of course it has integrated grounding uh, that we've done electrical bonding testing with um, it's uh, again universal so as long as that, that module has a flange on it, uh, it can be mounted using these, these clamps. And again, the big feature is just, just a great, the 50% reduction in clamps themselves. These, uh, the most of the system is, a, you're gonna keep hearing, it's a G90 galvanized steel. Uh, these clamps are also a G90 galvanized um, steel and it's a 12 gauge thickness. All right, a um, couple of other things. At the end of those purlins, the, the module mounting rails, there is a telescoping C-section that it can allow some adjustability. Um, so God forbid you find out that the module changed and you've got a different width of module than you first designed this or ordered this for. We've got you covered with that because this can slide in and out 22 inches on both ends. So you've actually got 44 inches of adjustability across the entire structure. Uh, like everything else, they're pre-punched, so you don't need to do any drilling. And G90 12 gauge steel, very heavy duty. 
then the way that the purlins attach to that I-beam strong back is by this beam clamp and splice. It's actually two parts in one. You don't need a separate splice. Um, what you can see that that uh, pixelated pink picture, that bar goes on top of the uh, lower flange of the purlin, and then they just bolt below with what you're seeing in the right photo, uh, right image, uh, with these small cast clamps and bolts. And then <clears throat> we've been asked uh, for uh, the ability to waterproof or try to resist water for the uh, carport structure. So, so PLP is offering a, uh, a gasket for this carport structure. Uh, this gasket is set up to work in our three quarter inch gap spacing that's created when you uh, assemble the, uh, the, the modules on the uh, structure itself. Uh, there's no tools required. Uh, this gasket presses right in place. Uh, we are supplying this in six, uh, 10 foot pieces and strips. Uh, we found out when we coiled up this gasket, it, uh, it might take a memory set. It might be a little bit harder to uh, install. So we're, we're providing it in these, uh, in these 10 foot pieces. So this gasket is very easy to cut. And uh, so when you get to your, your cross crosses or your joints, it's easy to cut and overlap the gaskets uh, to, to resist the water from coming through. Uh, between the modules. And then when it comes down to wire management, uh, as everybody knows, there are several third-party manufacturers of wire management options available. Uh, there's different cable trays out there. There's different uh, clips and clamps and things like that. Uh, they will all pretty much work with our carport structures. So what PLP has done is in our AP procedures, we've identified those and, and uh, called those out. Uh, so you you know it's really personal choice uh, what you're familiar with what you like when it comes to cable um, management. So for example, this this uh, ratcheted P clamp will work on our system. It would just tech screw into our purlins and you could place them wherever you want. So what we did in our AP procedures is we provided guidance on where you can attach uh, these accessories. And uh, also we've been asked about uh, attaching combiner boxes or other equipment. So we also have in our AP um, application procedures, any weight restrictions and where to attach those. So I, I highly just recommend you go to our application procedures and all that information is available to you. So those application procedures can be found on our website, of course, as well as these RFQ forms. RFQ is short for request for quote forms. This is the thing that gets us on the same page as you and your customer. So we're making sure that you're getting exactly what is needed for that site. We got your module, we know what kind of conditions we're designing it around and what kind of uh, ground it's going to be going into. And then we keep the, we take these in and design them for you and uh, give you a proposal back. So we really think we have a great cardboard design here. And uh, as Darren mentioned, uh, it's, it's really flexible in the size and it can, it's scalable and, and it's, uh, it's really easy to install in the field. Uh, to, couple, to, to build on top of that, uh, PLP is excited to announce that we've, uh, we have a new carport certified installer program. Um, and what we're doing here is we're trying to make it easier for end customers to locate uh, installers to, uh, to, if they want to install a carport system, to locate those installers, um, ones that have been certified by PLP. So uh, what we're offering here is uh, it's easy. You just uh, go onto our website. There's a form there to fill out. And then our administrator will be back in touch with you. Uh, and there's several benefits to come to becoming a, a certified installer for, for preformed line products on our carports. Uh, we're going to first, we're going to obviously post uh, those certified installers on our website to make it an easy search function to find you. Uh, we'll also be uh, be uh, receiving leads and for people who are looking for installers that we could send back out to you. Uh, we'll include that listing. We're also going to provide you with materials, branded merchandise, uh, and training 
uh, NAPSEP uh, certified or, or credited training for your for your crews. And really all we're asking for is, you know, we're going to be somewhat selective from the standpoint of we're looking for installers that have been around for at least three years installing uh, solar systems in the industry, uh, obviously having proof of insurance and um, having some other training as well. But uh, I please invite you to come to our website and fill out a form and uh, become a certified installer. So now we're gonna switch things up a little bit. We have a couple other products we'd like to go through. Uh, we talked about our carport. Now we'd like to talk about uh, our power peak ground mount system. So our power peak system is designed for utility projects mostly. We also kit it, I'll get into that momentarily. Uh, it comes in different combinations of galvanized steel and aluminum. So when cost is the most, most important thing in trying to beat out a bid, uh, the galvanized steel one is a good way to go. Uh, the lowest cost is when you use a roll form C channel as the vertical rather than an I beam, but it's available in both. Um, C channels don't go into hard ground very well, so I beams will often need to be your choice. Now, when uh, you want a little more flexibility and a little more ease of lifting up the module rails, we have the hybrid version. The uh, hybrid version has that same galvanized steel substructure as the GS does, but we have aluminum modules that go on top, or I'm sorry, aluminum module rails that go on top of that substructure. Um, those rails are also helpful if you got very slopey ground. So it, it, if the slope is uh, up to 15 degrees on either side of your vertical support, the um, aluminum rail can actually bend with it and be just fine. Um, and then we go all the way to the other extreme, which is the completely aluminum Power Peak AL that has an aluminum substructure. The I beam is still going to be um, your vertical but everything else is aluminum. So it is really easy to put together. It, uh, of course, if, if you're near um, the coast, this is what you're gonna wanna go with, or if you're in maybe even, uh, not that you would ever have to do these in cities, but if there's a lot of pollution around, these can also handle that kind of corrosion resistance. And um, John is gonna talk about the labor savings that comes with this. Thanks, Adam. So uh, yeah, just to dive a little bit deeper into the Power Peak AL, uh, it is our our system that goes in the fastest and and has probably the most pre-assembled components. Uh, it has been designed to uh, to really save on the labor side and on getting the system installed as quickly as possible. Really, the the key behind that is our our factory pre-assembly, and uh, one of the key components that we pre-assemble is the strong back. So our strong backs are not only the strong back, but they include the uh, the brace uh, and also the rail clamps and everything is put together in our factory. And you can see it's packaged up uh, in that image below. Um, I have some other images coming up. You'll see a better look at the uh, strong backs. Um, but then also the other thing that's, uh, can you back up a second? Uh, the, other thing, <laughs> the other thing that's pre-assembled is our, our module clamps. And these are the same module clamps we use on our rail systems as well. And uh, these, these are patented. Uh, PLP has a, uh, two patents on our clamps. One is on our, if you guys are familiar with them, one is on our rad bolt, which locks in place. So it's uh, once you put the bolt into the channel and the module is attached, uh, module is put into place and you, and you uh, put the nut down on the clamp, it's impossible to rotate that T-bolt back out. Uh, that's a great feature to its peace of mind. And then also now we have a patent on the fact that we put a sleeve on that uh, bolt to hold the clamp up. So we pre-assemble that in our factory. We put the sleeve on, we put the clamp on, we put the nut on. How many times you guys out in the field, you're, you're dropping the bolts or the nuts and, and especially if you're working at any heights, you gotta go down and get them again. 
but uh, everything's all in one piece. So really there's no loose parts here. Uh, it saves you from dropping any parts. Uh, and that's that, cl that um, clamp basically just twists right into the rail and then the, um, the clamp itself is held up so you can slide the module frame underneath. So it is really a, a huge time saver and, uh, and it really makes it easier for, uh, for one person operation. And then uh, the other thing that uh, saves, saves time on uh, the PowerPeak AL is the fact that it's an all bolt together construction. Again, we don't uh, require any cutting or uh, uh, welding or anything else like that in the field. And that even includes the uh, I-beams and the C-channels uh, for the verticals that would come with the system. Um, so those are already pre-drilled and then post-galvanized uh, to avoid any corrosion issues. And so you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have to do worry about drilling in the field. So I wanna step through just a couple of the other features here. So uh, this, the PowerPeak AL system, the strong back attachment uh, has been designed so that <clears throat> once the vertical is in place, you can set that attachment on the top of the vertical. And you can see here, the installer is able to then uh, get the hardware ready to put in place. What's nice is this is a one person operation. It, it stays in place until you install the hardware. So uh, it's a clever, clever little feature there where somebody could walk right down <clears throat> through all the I-beams and put these uh, strong back attachments on top and then somebody can follow behind with the hardware. <clears throat> the next thing here is that uh, we have is our strong back attachment. Again, this is pre-assembled in the factory. So it has the uh, four bolts with it and the, uh, the flanges behind. What's nice about it, it just slides right down the face of the I-beam. So you slide it down to the predetermined position, which is basically gives you your tilt angle that you're, that you're uh, desiring. And uh, then you just quickly tighten up those, uh, those nuts. And again, it's a one person operation and it's all pre-assembled. So there's no, there's no loose hardware. So here's the strong back um, fully pre-assembled from the factory. What's unique about it is, is uh, we've got this down to a one person operation. Uh, this installer can take and place the strong back on the cradle of the strong, strong back attachment and it will sit there in place. And then he can open up the arm, uh, the brace arm, unfold it and then put it onto the uh, strong back attachment. Uh, all this can be done by one person because it's all lightweight components, but it also stays in place prior to even having to come in and put your uh, your bolt and uh, nut assemblies. So what's really unique about this system is that uh, our engineers designed in a tapered or hourglass pivot hole in both the strong back attachment and the strut attachment. This is so unique because we've seen other systems out there that use an additional part to try to allow the system to rotate or pivot to really pick up for any misalignment. Where that misalignment comes from, it could be your I-beam. Your I-beam when it was driven might've twisted a little bit. And uh, what happens is if when you go to make your attachments, uh, you'll have to literally try to force back your strong back to get it lined up. Not, the, not a problem with uh, PLP's PowerPeak AL system here, because of that tapered hole, that, that uh, strong back will easily pivot back and forth until you get it square. Uh, and what it does is really saves you a lot of time on lining up the system and making sure that when you install, install your PV modules that you have a nice clean line on all your modules. So we've talked about a lot of different variations of Power Peak, either steel or aluminum or a combination. We also have a, a galvanized steel version or hybrid version for when you can't cut into the ground at all, you can't penetrate the ground. This happens if you're putting the installation on top of a landfill or if you just don't want to drill over and over again into bedrock, which of course nobody wants to do. Um, so as I mentioned, this is either galvanized steel or it's available with the aluminum module rails if you've got some variation in, uh, in sloping ground. Um, it uses pretty much the same components as the other power peaks, except this is a front and back leg design instead of a single central post design. 
and the front and back legs are weldments. Um, they also have the plates at the bottom. You can kind of see it in this photo. So uh, they bolt to the, the concrete ballast uh, threaded bolts that are coming up. Um, I'm sorry, threaded rod that's coming up. And you can just uh, adjust the plumb with that, just like a light post. So we also design the ballast for you. Um, they're just concrete. They can have some rebar in them and we provide the drawing to help you get through that quickly. Another cool thing about Power Peak having these common parts is that we've been able to make these into, um, into kits. So we've pre-engineered kits for anywhere from 12 to 60 modules. Uh, it's for pretty much all of the power peaks that we've been discussing, except the ones with steel module rails that'll have aluminum module rails. And these are pretty popular up in the north. Um, so we engineered it all the way up for 60 PSF of snow. Uh, we also have a California design, you know, for zero PSF of snow or most of the Southwest. Um, and that's gonna give you a lot fewer verticals. Um, as John has mentioned, and it's so great about uh, Power Peak is all the pre-assembled components. So these include that as well. And we also have uh, Excel configurators that can give very fast pricing and a bill of materials. You can see in the lower right there, that's also a drawing that, that we've got um, with a table on it showing the different numbers of verticals that are needed for your different sized uh, tables. So that's just ready to go. And like the carport, we uh, ask that an RFQ form be filled out, um, also available on our carport section of our website. Um, again, this just has the inputs that we and product support need to design it for your site. And we have some installation services uh, with our third-party partners. Uh, they can go at various levels if you want to push pull test or um, if, if you want to, if, of course, if you need a PE stamp, we can take care of those. And even the pile driving and the racking assembly. Um, so once we get those RFQ forms and product support, we take uh, two days to turn those around at the most, and we'll have a proposal over to you. Okay, so uh, in addition to uh, offering carports and our power peak system through AE Solar, uh, PLP also offers a roof mounting system uh, called our power rail system. But we really want to talk to you today about uh, the part of that system that's designed for commercial applications. So uh, we learned we learned probably over a decade ago that we had uh, customers who were putting up substructures on commercial buildings in order to get the spans down so that they could use a mounting rail system. And uh, so we came up with the idea to, to basically expand our power rail system into what we call our commercial power rail product offering. So you can see the, the, the different rails that we offer here. Uh, we got into what we call our D-series rails. And these are the same rails that we're using in our ground mounts, but we've designed them to also work in roof mount applications or open structure applications. So, um, these uh, these rails, as you can see, they're they're much beefier in design because they are going to they are set up to uh, go with longer spans. Um, they are made out of marine grade aluminum, which is a structural aluminum for strength. Uh, they have the same features as our power rail family with single tool assembly. You'll notice also that they have open side channels for wiring. So we thought it was important not to close the sides off, um, but leave them open because uh, there that's a great great location to tie in your cables and, and make it look more professionally appealing when you're when you're installing them. 
course, all of our, our power rail systems, uh, rails, and including our commercial power rail rails are all UL certified. And something to add on to that, John mentioned the uh, the ability to, to fit your wires into the side channels. We also have clamps that just clip onto there without a tool, so it'll hold all of your cables in. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Missed that one. But uh, yeah, it's a great feature. Uh, that way you don't have to go out and look for a separate cable tray or anything else like that. You can just tuck them right into our rails. Great point. Thank you. Sure. Um, so we really, we designed these rails for commercial applications, as I mentioned. So uh, whether it's an open structure or even for roof mounting. And uh, we've already gone out and, and used these rails on several high profile projects. Uh, we have our commercial rails on the Boston Logan Airport. We have them on the Philadelphia Eagle Stadium. We have them on several warehouses and schools and uh, even, even several corporate buildings like Facebook. So uh, this, these, uh, these rails, again, will, will save you from having to put a substructure on the roof or take advantage of an open structure in these high strength rails uh, because they're gonna be open to the elements and you need something that can withstand uh, higher wind loads and uh, heavier snow conditions, which Adam's gonna talk about. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, so this is, you're, you're seeing a list of all of our rails. Uh, the ones that are highlighted are the commercial rails that we're talking about, the D-series. And what I'm showing here is what you get for a zero snow condition on the top, which is still a pretty darn good span. You know, with um, even our lightest duty one, you're getting 88 inches. Um, but the greatest thing about this is the span when you've got something like 50 PSF of snow load. So uh, the two heaviest duty ones you can see, you can get over 140 inches. Um, and this is, this is actually up on a, a roof that's 30 feet tall, uh, 30 degree tilt, um, and, uh, you know, feet of snow just sitting on top of it so it's really great for those commercial applications actually that la one of the last pictures that john was showing was an installation in new jersey which has seen a whole lot of snow and it's standing up quite well to it yeah we we understand snow here in in cleveland <laughs> not so much in albuquerque <laughs> but we can only hope um so just a couple of of components to uh, use with the uh, the D series rail, we've got these mounting clamps on the right. So the I the bottom flange of the I section just fits right in there, and then that can bolt to any kind of a substructure that you've got, and it will do electrical bonding through it because it's already coming through the rail and into that base bracket. And then the uh, the splices are just um, a couple of plates that bolt on either side, or I'm sorry, they don't bolt. Those are self-drilling screws that just go in in an alternating pattern. So no pre-drilling needed, just drive them right in and you've got one solid continuous rail run. Okay, so in addition to our uh, power rail system for commercial applications, uh, we also wanted to mention today our ballasted roof mount options. Uh, we do have two two product lines that uh, satisfy this application. Um, the power rail system, of course, is a penetrating roof mount system. These are ballasted, which uh, don't require any penetrations. They're really designed for flat roofs. Um, one of the products that uh, we sell a lot of is our ballasted uh, power rail mount system here. Why we call it our ballasted power rail mount system is it, it utilizes our, our power rail system what we did is we added on ballast trays and uh, <clears throat> we've we put the system through wind tunnel testing to optimize it and uh, we can provide you and help you with the ballast uh, requirements and ballast reports uh, in this case the ballasted power rail system is a flush mount system so you can see there's no tilt angle on it uh, obviously you're giving up a little bit of production uh, without tilting but the great thing here is you can increase module density so if you have, you know, with the price of PV modules coming down, 
uh, a lot of a lot of clients are opting to go to these flush systems and get as much get as many modules on the roof as they can to gain uh, gain additional production. So this is our ballasted power rail mount system. And then in addition to that, we also offer our Power Max system. Now our Power Max system is, has been designed to provide uh, tilted versions, uh, including a dual tilt, and it also can be installed as a, in a flush configuration. So it's a very versatile product from that standpoint because it can solve multiple applications. Uh, what's really unique about our Power Max system, and a lot of installers are starting to appreciate this, similar to our carport design where we have the adjustable purlins where you can adjust for different uh, width modules and uh, you can make adjustments on the fly in the field. This system, you can adjust the inner row spacing. Uh, as far as I know, it's the first system that can do that. Uh, it is patent pending. And what it, what it does for you is that how many times do you get on a roof and, and, and maybe a, a vent or some, an obstruction wasn't identified? And uh, now you have to make a change. What's great about this system is you can make the change on the roof. You don't need to contact the uh, AEE and have to order more materials or relocate modules and change up your strings, uh, your wiring, because you have to maintain your strings. Uh, all this can be handled by just adjusting the inner row. Uh, there's, there's a wide range of adjustment here. The five, inch, five degree system can adjust from seven and a half inches up to 18 and a half inches on the inner row spacing. And the 10 degree system can adjust from eight and a half inches up to 19 and a half inches. So this is a lot of flexibility on this system. And we've got a lot of good feedback from installers saying this saved them on their job because uh, they didn't have to go back, order more materials, delay the project and uh, incur a lot of additional labor. So uh, this is our PowerMax system. Again, it's offered in five degree or 10 degree tilt systems a dual tilt, which uh, basically is kind of back and forth like a sawtooth design, and then it also can be installed in, uh, in a flush condition. It is UL certified, and it also has been wind tunnel tested and certified. Well, that's about all that we've got for the specific products that we want to discuss today. So we have a lot more information available on our website, preform.com. And uh, that includes sales literature, um, all of the installation manuals. Uh, we have some configurators to help you design your systems if you'd like. And then backing that, of course, in partnership with AEE, we, uh, we can help out when you've got some tough questions um, or some tough situations that you need to get through. Uh, product support team and the engineering team are always available. So that's what we have for you today. We really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to learn more about our products and hope that it was informative, educational, and, and even interesting. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, th thank you, Adam and John. That was a great presentation and very informative. Um, I'd like to uh, start out our um, question and answer session now. So if you have any questions, um, some have already come through, uh, but if you have any additional questions, please submit them through the question section located on your control panel. And we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, you can exit the webinar at any time during the Q&A session. Uh, the survey will pop up in a new window once the webinar ends. and please do give us your feedback on the survey and uh, it helps us to better serve you with uh, uh, topics you're interested in. And of course, we will send you the presentation once you uh, fill out that survey. So I would like to start off the Q&A session with our first question that came in um, from Paul and it, states is there any hope and i believe this came in uh in the beginning when when you were going through the carport uh product is there any hope for miami broward county that has 180 mile per hour high velocity hurricane zone specs 
Oh, I wish we could say yes. Um, but there, there wouldn't be for this. We might be able to do a different type of a product for that. It's not going to have the same kind of cantilever, but we have some other ground mounts that can handle it. Unfortunately, the spacing between the uh, verticals is going to be a lot closer together with those kinds of winds. Yeah, we know Florida is a big challenge, the entire state. And it seems to be getting worse every year. Yes. Uh, another one came in, uh, another one from Paul. He, he mentioned, I stopped using flat mount systems because of the buildup of residue. Do you have any suggestions or a solution for that? Yeah, we're, we're aware that the folks that have, that use uh, the flat or flush mount systems usually have a regular maintenance program to, uh, to clean those modules. Um, that is one of the things that you're you're going to have to be aware of. But we also have seen five and ten degree tilt systems also build up uh, um, some sort of residual um, materials on there or anything from just uh, things floating around in the air. So it's probably good to have a, a regular maintenance program to clean your modules. I, I just I'd like to speak from experience. We had a we had a system on one of our rooftops for PLP that was at a 30 degree tilt. It was in an industrial area and uh, our modules got dirty uh, and we made sure we cleaned them on a regular basis. Great, excellent. Um, another question, what is the timeline from purchase order to delivery? Well, um, that varies depending on the product, um, but power rail, it goes out the door in two to three weeks um, from, that is from our factory. And then when it comes to carport, I think you're looking a little more on the other end of things, which can be up to eight weeks. Okay, great. Um, and I've got on the carport uh, product, what is the embedment depth for the foundation? Ah, um, those vary depending on whether you've got a concrete cap or around the, uh, the base just above the grade, um, but they vary, uh, they're usually around, Oh, this one is catching me off guard. I think that they're about a hundred inches, if I'm not mistaken. Or let, let me say 80 to 100 inches. Those are the numbers that I'm remembering. And we can actually make them a little bit shallow, uh, shallower because those are the numbers that we have for a two foot diameter um, concrete foundation. So you can probably take about a third off of that if you make it a 36 inch diameter foundation um, and we're willing to help give recommendations and work with the PE for whatever this your specific situation is. Excellent and does PLP have a design tool for the commercial rail? We don't have a public one available yet. We have one for, well, we did show P14 rail. That is the one that wasn't the I section, like the D series rails. And that actually has one of the longest spans that can get a 20 foot span sometimes. Um, that is available online in our power rail design configurator. The other ones, we have some span charts, so those will be helpful uh, also on our website. Or you can go through A&E, come to us, and if you've got some really wild situations, we can help make the best design for you. Yeah, I just like that. Our span cantilever charts are very detailed. Uh, with a lot of information and a lot of different uh, site conditions, snow, snow and wind speeds. Uh, so please, please refer to those span and cantilever charts to see what that, what that rail would be rated for. And then uh, if that doesn't solve, solve the issue, then uh, obviously our product support team is available to uh, help you out. 
Great. And then you had mentioned um, single tool uh, installation. What type of equipment is needed for the carport installation? Yeah, on the carport, uh, basically it's a bolt together con uh, design. So uh, standard uh, tools for uh, tightening your nuts is all is all you need. Uh, a torque, a torque bar, uh, so you can get the proper torque measurements. But uh, everything everything is all all bolt together construction. And I think you're looking at a maximum one and a half inch socket. Um, of course, you know you've got some I beams to lift. Uh, and you're going to be working up a little bit. So sometimes and you can probably get away with a ladder, but scissor lifts are always good. And yeah, some kind of uh, a crane to be able to lift that I-beam on top of the, uh, the, the vertical supports is probably not a bad idea either. But everything else is just, like John was saying, just, just a wrench or impact driver, making sure you got good torque. Great, and I've got one final one here. Um, do you offer, or are, are you providing any details for the carport foundation requirements? Um, yes, yeah, we have recommendations that are actually currently on our website. If you go to the carport page on the website and look under the documentation there, you'll see there's a couple of construction drawings. We have one for the one car deep, also known as the exterior carport, and one for uh, two cars deep. And it shows a bunch of different possibilities for your foundation and what should go into them. Uh, again, these are just recommendations that we worked with the, our PE on, but if there are uh, things that don't fit quite well with what you're seeing on the drawing, we can always work with that PE to help design something different. And um, as I also mentioned, the, the ones that are on there are two foot diameter uh, concrete foundation. We also do have some other designs that aren't shown on there for three foot diameter. Awesome. Well, that is it for the questions that have come through. Um, if there's any other questions that uh, come in afterwards, uh, go ahead and uh, email um, us directly and we'll get those answered for you. Uh, thank you, Adam and John. Uh, really appreciate uh, the presentation, very informative. Um, any uh, final comments from either of you? Um, I just thank, thank you, Jamie, for uh, hosting this and uh, we appreciate it and uh, we, we enjoy working with AEE Solar. Yes, thank you again for your time and thank you all of AEE and all the attendees. Great. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, so, yeah, thank you all for joining the presentation today. Um, and be sure to join us next Friday at 9 a.m. for our next webinar, a uh, overview of new module technologies and formats uh, that will be presented by our very own Glenn Hall and Josh Brister. So uh, thank you all again. Um, and uh, please have a great day and thank you for your business.